Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips with a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Take it to go out today, see if things came out today, see if things are on sale. Now today though, new release wise, some of the bigger things that are coming out, there's a couple of different things. Uh, one of them is a movie called Fear of Rain. There's also the uh, you know the new uh, movie with Paul Hogan, uh, the very excellent Mr. Dundee, which is like a crocodile Dundee. Uh, like Kind of like him playing himself and stuff like that. Also though, the film uh, Horizon Line, uh, that releases today. As well as one which I'm so excited about. I already uh, ordered that one, so that one actually just came from Amazon now and it's the blu-ray of you know finally on blu-ray of the film Good Burger so I was like so excited about that one absolutely love that movie so much so yeah that one uh, just arrived but I don't know if that one's gonna be available in any stores or anything I'll definitely be checking today to see if they have it anywhere I feel like it could possibly be you know in like maybe Best Buy I feel like Best Buy might have it but we'll definitely see uh, you know also though there's one film that's coming out uh, called The Leprechaun's Game which is a film which I have a part in it's one of those ones where I filmed a scene in there like talking about the origin of the leprechaun and everything and that one should be in Walmart but you know with Walmart though you never know if they put the stuff on the shelves so I feel like I might have to go to a couple different ones as usual to try and find it but you know fingers crossed hopefully you know I see it like early and don't go to a million different locations to try and find it and everything uh, but other than that though at the end of this video is gonna be a whole bunch of brand new DVD blu-ray and 4k reviews for some things I received a review and talk about for you guys so definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video and as always too let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs blu-rays and 4k's that are reviewed at the end of this, end of this video what you guys thought of them if you guys have seen them also if you guys plan on picking any of them up but anyway though guys let's get going and see what we can find today into Target we go but taking a look here in the front, I actually see something new changed out here. Uh, this is one of the ones that I, I totally forgot they was releasing today, and it was uh, Lovecraft County. This is the complete uh, first season of the show, and it's uh, $27.99 for the um, Blu-ray, and then $24.99 for the DVD of that one. But like I said, like it's very you know rare that they change out the very front section, but like they they do every so often. But other than that, though, I don't see anything else new here in the front. Let me just check here on the side because every, every so often sometimes the stuff changes. But some of these things have been here forever like his dark materials, uh, Gretel and Hansel. This has been the front for a really long time. Let's check too over here. Yeah, all the same stuff like Call of the Wild, Doolittle. Yeah, so nothing new over here. But we'll head over to uh, the actual section though and see uh, what new stuff they have over there though. And hopefully they have some new stuff out though. Yeah, but in there though, luckily enough, they had out all the new stuff. And they had in there though, uh, one of the new things they had was a movie called Horizon Line. And that one was $16.99 uh, for the DVD of that one. It didn't look like they had a uh, Blu-ray of that one in there. Uh, if you guys have seen that one though, let me know how that one was. I've not heard anything about it. Uh, the, it sounded like it was interesting though from reading it though. It sounded interesting. Uh, other than that though, they also had uh, Fear of Rain in there. And that one was uh, $16.99 for the Blu-ray. And then it was uh, $14.99 for the DVD. The other one that they had too was The Incredible Mr. Dundee. And then that one was $16.99 for the Blu-ray. And then um, $14.99 for the DVD. Other than that though, I didn't see anything else different in there. But now that we're going to head over to Walmart. And hopefully the first location has out the, um, the new stuff in there. But you never know. This one can be really hit or miss. And a lot of times, like maybe like two weeks ago, they finally had some new stuff out. But other than that, they haven't in forever. But, and if you're wondering, I ended up getting just some printer paper in there, so that's what's in here. But anyway, though, and head over to the Walmart. Like I said, fingers crossed. We'll see, though. Into Walmart we go. Yeah, and hopefully they have out the new stuff in here today and everything. I'm in here, too, a little bit later. I kind of, like, wanted to see if, like, going into these stores, like, a tiny bit later might have the things be out. More of a chance and everything. So it's about 2 uh, p.m. now. And more, quite often I'm in here at, like, 12.30 or so normally. So, like I said, I'm a little later. So we'll see if this makes any difference coming in here later, especially if I go to any of the other locations, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to and everything. But like I said, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Hopefully there's some of this stuff out in here and I don't have to go to like a million locations. But we'll see, though. Yeah, well, it's no different than normal. As you see, it's all like empty again. And like, and even the stuff from last week isn't out. Like Freaky, there's none, none of the Freaky ones are out here. Uh, Greenland's still not out. Let Him Go isn't out. I love Wedding and Disasters. The the Blu-ray isn't out. That might have sold out. But you see, I think that there, other than that, there's like nothing. There's all these other empty spots in here. And then around here on the side, that's like Wander Darkly. All the stuff from last week was never put out. 
Isn't that crazy? It's like crazy that it's like always like that. I, I can never figure it out. They do have a, um, a Nintendo Switch, which I know those are always hard to find. So it's funny that's down there. But, you know, there's no... They just aren't changing these things out. It's so weird. And like as you see in here too, uh, like there's not even the spots for where the new ones would be. It's either just like stuff that's empty from the past weeks and everything, but I don't see any of the new stuff at all. And sometimes I ask them and then like it's like it doesn't go anywhere asking. But let's see, this just making sure there's nothing like randomly mixed in, in here, but it doesn't to me look like it. I don't see anything else uh, new in here or anything like that. But yeah, like I said, I, I had a feeling I'd be heading to other uh, Walmarts and everything today. But sometimes too, what you do is you like peek over here and you see like, like usually where I would see boxes would be like over here, like over here in the ground and stuff, you'd see boxes of some of the new things. And then like, if you peek like over here, like here's like a bunch of boxes. Like who knows, these could be like the new stuff over here. Like let's see, it says like Electronics 216, see Warner Home Video. So honestly that's something from Warner Brothers in there, I don't know what. And you see some stuff and some more boxes there. So that could be like the case is like it's stuff is still in boxes. I might ask them to see if they can find the one Leprechaun one that I was, I, told, that I mentioned to you guys that I was in. Because I wanted to make sure I can find that one today. Because I haven't even uh, gotten a copy of it yet, so I want to see it too. But there are some more random stuff over here too, like some TV and stuff like that. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to ask them to see if just in case they might have it in a box somewhere. But yeah, no luck in there. They didn't end up finding them in the boxes or anything like that. Like I said, it's always so strange with like Walmarts now, with like how, how hard it is to find this stuff. Cause it's like, when I go to other ones, like in way other areas, like when I was in the Fresno area, the Walmart had like everything out so stocked perfectly. Uh, when I was in the one in, um, you know, Indianapolis, I went to Walmart there, they had everything out. So it's just like crazy. It's all like the San Diego area or something, for some reason, always doesn't have this stuff out. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but Fingers crossed, hopefully we can find one location that has this stuff or we'll go in a box and find them. You know what I mean? We'll see though. We'll see. Into the second Walmart we go. Yeah, but in here though, they have like the, uh, there's like a lot of empty spaces and I see like two new things in here. They have Harley Quinn, the complete second season here. I don't see the price on this one. They do have that. Um, and this one, this, this one, um, Naruto, I think this may have released today here, set two. This may have been today as well as Lovecraft County. Other than that though, I see all these empty spaces and nothing else in here. I looked in here, I didn't see anything else new. I'm going to ask the guy though to see if there's any boxes over here, any of the new stuff. But there would have been a handful of other new things today but yeah like nothing else out here in this one though but we'll see though if they can find anything though in the boxes like I said I'm gonna check over there just to see that's one thing though I can say I've never seen before is like getting the uh, five dollar bin filled so actually like putting new stuff here in the five dollar bin so that's funny like she's the man like clueless double feature there and everything like that but yeah like restocking the five dollar bin so that's kind of cool but yeah though i ended up asking the guy in the uh, section though and he went in the back and he was looking and he couldn't find the box or anything like that it's one of those things where he's like he said it's probably in here but it could be like anywhere but it's always so strange with these boxes and stuff like and like not being able to be found <laughs> and all this kind of stuff because like i said there was a lot of other things that i know they would have had today there's like two other hard ones so i believe they would have probably had at least one of those and a couple other things but We'll head to another, you know, uh, Walmart and we'll see though. Like I said, a lot of fingers crossing today. Into the third Walmart we go. Yeah, and just like that, I'm already out of there. I didn't even film anything. You know, I, I, I asked them in there and then I was like, you know, I didn't see any of the new stuff out. The same, the same thing in the other one. I, and they're like, oh, well, if it's not on a shelf, we don't have it. But I said, oh, I looked on the thing and it says in stock. and. I looked for some of the other new releases and it said in stock. And I said, where is the stuff? It's in the back and, oh, uh, I have to, the boss would be the only one who would know and stuff. But it's like, man, it is such a to-do nowadays in Walmarts with the movies. It is so incredibly strange. Like I said, what is going on? But the stuff's sort of just sitting in the back and then like in a lot of these locations is never coming out. Like I said, every week I talk about it, it's sort of like a, bro a broken record about the movies never being out. But someday, it's like a dream, you know what I mean? Like if I had a genie wish, one of the wishes, it would be kind of weird to waste it on that, but it would be like, 
oh, I just wish that Walmart would just, you go in there every Tuesday and they just have everything out and it'd be like my strange genie wish, <laughs> genie wish. but I'm gonna head into uh, Best Buy now. I might head to another Walmart, maybe, we'll, we'll see. Um, I ended up just ordering the Leprechauns game on, on Amazon because I'm just tired of going to so many so many of them. But uh, we're going to head into uh, Best Buy now. And like I said, hopefully uh, they have the stuff out in here today because it like, would be a running gag of everywhere not having everything out except Target, which was the one originally that never would have the stuff out. Like I said, it's all flopped around the way things are going. But into uh, Best Buy we go. But yeah, let's take a look here. I'm taking a look here right at the front. I don't see anything new right here on this side. It's all the stuff in the past couple weeks. Let's take a look though around the side here. See if there's anything new here. I see Lovecraft County here, and that's uh, 20, uh, $27.99 for the um, Blu-ray of that one. Other than that, the other things here I see from, from, from the past couple weeks. Let's head over to the actual section over here and see anything else different they have. Let's see. But taking a look here, though, on the actual section, though, some of the new things I saw was they had an anime here called, I think it was like JoJo something, and that was $59. They also had Fear of Rain, and that one was a $14.99 for the Blu-ray. There's a movie there called The Informer. I don't know anything about this one. If you guys have seen that one, let me know how that was. That was $15.99. They also have Arch Enemy. This is one of the ones I was looking for in Walmart. That one was a $12.99 for the Blu-ray, and then uh, uh, Random Acts of Violence, and that one is a $12.99 for the Blu-ray as well. There's also a spot, though, for Horizon Line for the Blu-ray for $22.99, but I did not see that one in there. Into the fourth Walmart we go. But yeah, though, this is definitely going to be the last Walmart that I go to. This is one of the ones when I looked on the store locator, it said unknown. So like for the availability, all the other ones said like in stock limited availability. So we'll see if there's any difference to that at all. Uh, and I saw like one location, like in, uh, 30 minutes from me that said like, you know, in stock aisle number, which might mean that that would be the one for sure to go to. What I think I'm going to do though, is um, next Tuesday, I might shake it up and go like to a totally, like I was mentioning this before, an area that's like 35 minutes away, and I might do that and maybe I'll have a little bit of luck, you know, just shaking it up and seeing if maybe that location, and because like when you think about it, if I'm driving all around all these different ones, even if it's like 35 minutes away, it might, it might make more sense than doing all this driving all around to random spots and everything. That's funny, a um, long sleeve it shirt, that's pretty cool in here. But yeah, like we'll see though if this one has anything. This one usually doesn't have much of anything, but we'll see. I have asked in the past though them to get something out of the back in this one and they have done it. So we'll see though. But yeah though, like taking a look in here though, I see some of the more recent stuff like Freaky and that kind of stuff, but I do not see any of the new ones updated at all in here. I don't know where they would put them. I think it would probably be like somewhere within this vicinity is where they would put them. I'm gonna ask them though, just to see if they can find it. Because like I said, I have asked them in this one in the past and they have found this stuff because I don't see any of the new things from today. Like I don't see the TV series, the Lovecraft County or anything like that. So like I said, I'm gonna see if maybe they can find it. You know, we'll see though. But yeah, another, you know, no bean situation. Like I stood over there for like 10 minutes and the guy was like helping a woman like find a phone or something. And then like um, he came out of the back after the 10 minutes or so. And then he's like, oh, I don't know. Uh -huh. I might be here and then he went to another spot and they disappeared for another while so I'm just like forget it I never even got to ask him or anything it's like what like I was saying like a real no uh, beans situation today and everything with trying to f find this thing today but you know um but like I said, I want to let you guys know that it is available, though, the Leprechauns game. If you guys see it uh, and you guys end up picking it up, let me know what you guys thought. Like I said, I'm in there, like, talking about the origins of the Leprechaun and all that kind of stuff. So I really wanted to find it in the stores. And there's, like I said, there's also a handful of other things today I wanted to show uh, as well. But absolutely no beans. Uh, again, with it, with old, old Walmart and the no beans situations lately. But anyway, though, guys, let me know in the comments below, though, what you guys picked up on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K. If you guys ended up picking up anything new today. Also, let me know as well what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that are reviewed at the end of this video. What you guys thought of them. Uh, and if you guys plan on picking any of them up. And as always, too, let me know, too, anything new that you guys have checked out on streaming. Any new TV shows or movies or any of that kind of stuff as well. But anyway, though, guys, now stay tuned for the brand new reviews.
And the first one I got here is from Lionsgate, and it's a movie here called The Very Excellent Mr. Dundee. This is a really fun movie. This stars Paul Hogan, and this is basically, you know, you know Paul Hogan from the uh, Crocodile Dundee films, and it's basically him playing a version of himself, like a parody of himself for the most part, because everybody in, in here is playing versions of themselves, but kind of like an over-the-top, or like parodying certain things about themselves and things like that in this, because it's not them playing exactly themselves, it's like a goofier version of them, and it's basically, it kind of has the vibe of like Curb Your Enthusiasm a little bit like with Larry David and Paul Hogan is kind of like Larry David in that where it's like he ends up going into these situations where things you know anything that can go wrong goes wrong and goes wrong really bad and he has to try and like figure out how he's going to fix the situations and Paul Hogan in here as I was saying is playing a version of himself and it's him trying to figure out like his manager is messaging him telling him that people really want him to you know reboot or do another Crocodile Dundee film and he recently did like the ad uh, a couple years back for Australian tourism and he had a cameo in that and it kind of brought back more interest in A Crocodile Dundee and it's basically though him trying to figure out exactly how he's going to you know bring back you know Crocodile Dundee and you know even if he really wants to or not but his manager is all about it so he's kind of going around to meetings talking to people and like I said things go really wrong in them and like John Cleese is in the film playing like um uh, like an Uber driver like his you know it's, he's playing himself but now he's an Uber driver to make more money and like Chevy Chase is in here as, as his friend and there they have like some funny stuff that happens and Wayne Knight is in the movie and he's like um bothering um Paul Hogan to stay at his house because you know, he has to practice for this play and his wife doesn't want him singing all the time and so there's some really funny stuff Olivia Newton-John is in here a couple other cameos as well but I thought this was fun I always like these kind of versions you know movies where people are playing versions of themselves and like parodies and stuff like that but I thought this was definitely a really fun watch I and like I said, this one has on here, though, feature-wise, it has a behind-the-scenes featurette on here with comedy legend Paul Hogan, John Cleese, and Chevy Chase, you know, talking about the making of the film and stuff. And the next one I got here is from Lionsgate as well. It's a movie here called Fear of Rain. Uh, this one stars Katherine Heigl, Madison Eisman, as well as Harry Connick Jr. And it's basically, though, about Madison Eisman's character who ends up getting out of treatment. She basically was, you know, in the hospital. She found out that, you know, she has early stages of, you know, schizophrenia. And she's basically, like, you know, has been put on medication. And she's kind of going through that whole process of everything and trying to figure out the right doses and those kind of things. And she's just gone back home after being away for a while and everything. And basically, though the second she gets back you know to her house you know her one teacher says oh you know because her teacher lives right next door to her and she says oh I can't wait to see you in class I'm so glad you're back and everything and you know and then but, but right when the the girl goes up into her um, bedroom she looks out the window and sees that the same neighbor's house who is her teacher and she notices up in the attic she hears like this voice of this kid who's crying and everything and she sees this girl in her window but see it's the same time though she's like thinking oh I'm imagining this there's no girl up there because basically you know since she found out about the skits and stuff she's always like not sure if what she's seeing is real or if the person that she's meeting is actually real or she's imagining that person and everything so it ends up being like this whole thing of her when she sees this girl in the window but at the same time it's really starting to bother her because she's seeing the girl a lot and it's making her really wonder is she imagining this? Is this all part of schizophrenia? Or is there actually somebody in the, you know, in that house? And it's basically, and it's awkward too, like I said, because it's her teacher and like she's in class with her and all that kind of stuff. And then if she tells her parents about the whole thing too, they're going to think, oh, uh, you know, is, is, you know, is this medication not working? And at the same time, there's all this kind of stuff too, right when she leaves the um, hospital in the beginning and the, the doctor says like, oh, well, if this medication doesn't work and everything, you, she might have to be committed and you know living in the hospital full time and everything so it's it's a whole situation I thought this was actually really cool there's some really creepy stuff in here uh, as well on here though feature wise this has a featurette on the film as well as uh, deleted scenes uh, the next one here is from Paramount and this is a really really cool collection here and, and two of the movies in here are available for the very first time ever on Blu-ray this is the um, John Hughes five movie collection here this also this includes the Blu-ray as well as digital copies of all the films in this one but this has in here Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, a Ferris Bueller's Day Off, a She's Having a Baby, Pretty in Pink, and Some Kind of Wonderful. And, um, you know, Some Kind of Wonderful and uh, She's Having a Baby have never been released before on Blu-ray. So this is the first time that these ones are available on Blu-ray in this set. And they in here, too, uh, each film is on its own disc. So each film has its own uh, separate disc for the movies. And like I said, it also includes the digital copies of the films as well. But this is a great set. And I'm really, like I said, so glad that Some Kind of Wonderful 
Marvel and she's having a baby are finally out on a uh, Blu-ray. My favorite movie though in here out of all the films though is Plane Trains and Automobiles. Like that's probably the one that I have watched the absolute most. Uh, like I, I, I just love that movie so much. It's one of those movies too. Like if it's on TV, you like immediately will like watch the whole thing. Yeah, I was I watched it recently again on the airplane. It's like one of those movies I just love it so much. It's like such it's such an amazing movie though, and like one of those super watchable films. And and Pretty in Pink though was one that I only actually saw for the very first time about a year or so ago. And these like I said, this is just a great collection here. Now some of the stuff that's on here too on um uh the feature wise. For the new films, uh, She's Having a Baby, that has on here from the archives, Kevin Bacon interviews uh, John Hughes, as well as a theatrical trailer. And on Some Kind of Wonderful, it has a commentary with director, with the director as well as Leah Thompson. It has a conversation on here with the director on here. It has the making of Some Kind of Wonderful, uh, Meet the Cast of Some Kind of Wonderful, and John Hughes' Time Capsule. And then on the um, on Plane, Trains, and Automobiles, that had on there the deleted scene, the air, airline food scene, too. I, I like that scene. Uh, the TV version usually puts that in when they the TV cut of the film, uh, and I think that's a great scene. Uh, it has on there though um, some of the other stuff on here, like the legacy of John Hughes, uh, tribute, uh, part one and two. Uh, getting there is half the fun. The story of planes and automobiles on Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It has getting there together uh, uh, with you know with the fat cast of uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the making of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, uh, the world according to Ben Stein, a vintage Ferris Bueller's Day Off, um, lost tapes, class album and then on Pretty in Pink it has a filmmaker focus with the director talking about the film isolated score as well as the original ending on this one like I said great collection here uh, the next one here is from um, uh, Paramount as well and this is also from um, from uh, Comedy Central and this is the complete series here of the Amy Schumar show and I, I don't know if it was ever released in the past as a full complete series I th I'm not sure if it has been or not I remember there was you know some of them released on DVD in the past but I never cannot remember for sure if they were ever released in a complete series but this was always a really fun show uh, this is basically though like a sketch comedy show with Amy Schumer and it was like her playing different characters and kind of getting into you know there's a lot of different cameos and stuff with with uh, celebrities on the show like some of the ones that were like guest stars on here like Amber Rose Justin Long uh, John Glaser so there's a lot of a lot of comedians and stuff like that that were on the show but like I said it was basically just a sketch show with her and you know playing different roles and kind of like all kind of ridiculous things happening but it's a very very, very fun uh, show. Here's a look, though, inside here at the um, the discs here. Uh, the next one here is from uh, Paramount as well, and this is one that I want you guys to know is available. This is a movie which stars Diana Ross, and this is uh, the story of, of uh, Billie Holiday, and this is uh, Lady Sings the Blues. And this one here uh, has on here, though, a commentary track on here with the executive producer on here as well as the director and artist manager, Sally Berger. This also has on here the Behind the, lady, you know, behind, uh, the Blues, Lady Sings the Blues, as well as deleted scenes on this one. And this is basically the, the, the story, though, of Billie Holiday and kind of like a biopic on her her life and it's you know Diana Ross is playing Billie Holiday in the film like I said just want you guys to know that this one was available on blu-ray uh, the other one here from Paramount as well is a movie called uh, Redemption Day this is basically though about a soldier who had gotten back you know from being you know um you know in the um the marines and everything and he had gotten back and you know his um was it his wife, I believe? Yeah, his wife, basically his wife, though, was right when he got back, was going away to Morocco on, on, on a trip that she was doing for work and everything, and she ends up getting into this area where she ends up, you know, was like a dangerous area, and she ends up getting kidnapped and basically taken by this terror, terrorist group, and it's basically, though, right when he gets back from war, you know, he has to go back, and, and you know, because he thought, okay, I'm done now, I've been, you know, I'm finally back, I'm going to be, you know, and everything, but now, though, that his girlfriend was kidnapped, and he knows that it's not going to be a good thing so it's basically him having to go and figure out how he's going to infiltrate this area and rescue his girlfriend and, and that's basically what it is it's a really really well done like intense film this has on here though Redemption Day behind the scenes a uh, feature out on this one here as well but like I said this one here is called Redemption Day but a really interesting well made movie about this guy though having to go after he got back from war having to go back to try and rescue his girlfriend from this terrible situation with this terrorist group uh, the next one's here uh, these ones are both from um, RLJ Entertainment this is a movie here, which is uh, stars Jay Burchell, and he also directed this film as well, and it's called Random Acts of Violence. This is a fun movie. I really love the cover on this one as well. And this is basically, though, about... Um 
it's about a guy who does like uh, this comic book series, which is like a, like an R-rated kind of um, like horror comic. This is really you know um, horror graphic novel comic. It's very popular, has a huge fan base, and basically though he goes around and they go and like um, him and his friends go around and kind of you know do like comic book signings and go to comic book events and everything. And they of course meet like kind of people that are a little obsessive with the comic book and a little weird acting and everything because it's like I said a real horror comic. So they kind of come across some odd types and everything. Thing. And they're making their way to a, you know, I think it was like, it says New York Comic Con, I believe it was like a big Comic Con they were going to. And basically, though, they're kind of driving through this small town. And they put like some of their comic books in the small town gas station and everything. And basically, what ends up happening, though, is they're, they're, they're along their way, though, they're seeing like, they see like these people were killed. And, and you've come to find out, this is like early on in the movie, that there is somebody like dressed like this killer that is kind of going on and killing and like mimicking making things that were in the book and everything but now though the you know the comic book writer and his friends that are all going like on their making their way to comic con are now dealing with this guy kind of coming after them and they're dealing with this whole thing and it's a really intense movie and it has a real throwback 80s style slasher vibe like i said i thought this is a really fun movie this has on here though feature wise an interview on here with the director uh, as well as some uh, featurettes on here like inside the making of an action scene on this one here uh as well the next one here is from rlj entertainment as well this is a movie called Art. I think it says Arch Arch or oh yeah, Arch Enemy. I'm a little dyslexic, so like when I when I read it like that, it's like, I believe it's Arch Enemy. I think I, I think I'm saying saying that right. Like I said, very very dyslexic sometimes with reading certain words. But this one, you know, stars Joe Mangiano, uh, Mangiello. I feel like hopefully I'm saying his name right. I feel like I'm I mess up his name sometimes. But this is basically though. This is a cool movie. It's his character as this superhero. Well, he's like. You know, he's now, he's on the streets living as, he's, he's homeless, but basically though, you know, you find out in the beginning of the movie though that he is saying how he's a superhero and how he had fallen to earth and all this kind of stuff and he's trapped on earth and like his powers are not as strong and everything. And basically though, he's kind of always on the, you know, going around telling people this and people think that he's kind of crazy and these stories that he's telling and all this kind of stuff. And basically though, this one kid, he ends up going to the um, this newspaper and gets this job as, you know, kind of doing uh like stories like not, not kind of like a website where they do like news stories and like uh stuff around the town and like um like really popular like uh like buzzfeed kind of stuff too and, and basically though this kid gets a job uh like a temporary job where they're like a trial period where they're going to see like how he would write and if he can actually write a story and everything and you know and everything so basically he sees this guy and hears about him uh that he says he's a superhero and he like sees him like the one day like punching at the wall and everything so he wants to go and write this story on him so he kind of wants to follow him around and everything but then his sister gets involved in this one thing with this bad guy and then it's basically though about the superhero now having to try and like be a superhero again because of all this stuff that's going on and I don't know I thought this was actually a really really cool movie like I said this one here is called Arch Enemy and this one has on feature feature wise it has the making of Arch Man Enemy on this one. And the next one I got here is from Kino Larber. And this one here is a documentary that I give a top recommendation to. I absolutely love this. And it's a documentary here called Film Worker. And this is basically, though, about, you know, uh, Leon Vitale. And Leon Vitale was, um, you know, Stanley Kubrick's assistant for 30 years. So basically, Leon, Leon Vitale saw, um, you know, wanted to, you know, was an actor. And he was doing, like, TV and a couple movies and everything. And he saw... I think it was one of Stanley Kubrick's really early movies in theaters. And he, like, after he saw that, he said to himself, I, I want to work for this man. And he ended up soon after got an audition for Stanley Kubrick to act in Barry London. And he ended up getting on Barry London. And Stanley Kubrick was, like, really impressed with his acting and ended up, like, increasing his role in the film, giving him a bigger part and everything. And, and after it was done, he was telling Stanley, you know, I, I really would like to work for you. And I would really like to know everything about filmmaking and all aspects and every quality that there is. And basically, though, he he says, if that's this is the case, I'll read this book, and I want you to read all these books, and tells him all these things, and he ends up bringing him on to help him. Uh, you know, so Leon gets hired on by Stanley to like go and uh, help him with like casting, and then he kind of you know for uh, The Shining, and then he you know brings basically brings him on to every single project that he does until he passes passed away uh, right after uh, Eyes Wide Shut, or right, actually right before Eyes Wide Shut was even fully finished. 
And basically, though, Leon would go and he would be on the set the whole time. He would work with the actors. He would write down notes about everything, like every single note you could imagine. Uh, Stanley Kubrick had him watch, looking through all the prints. So like when Eyes Wide Shut was getting ready to go to theaters, he had to go and like watch through the entire print, every print from the U.S. that was going to theaters. It was crazy, some of the stuff that he was doing. And it's like talking about like uh, some behind the scenes movie about the, 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 the films and some of the stuff that had gone on behind the scenes. It is an amazing documentary. You guys have 100% got to check this one out. It has on here, though, uh, in, uh, feature-wise, it has a Q&A with Leon Vitale, as well as the director of the documentary here. The next one here is another documentary, and this is from, um, um, what was the name of the company on this one? It was um, Pop Motion Pictures, and this is um, a documentary called The Last Blockbuster. And this is one I was really interested in watching. If you guys don't know, like I always have loved video rental stores. Like Some of my earliest memories of movies are going uh, as a kid to Blockbuster. I, Blockbuster was not the first video rental store I ever went to. The first video rental store I ever went to was like some, I remember like a really, really small like mom and pop video store that my dad's friend worked at. And I, that was like when I was a really, really little kid. And then around that same time, I think I started going to Blockbuster. But I think before Blockbuster was like these small mom and pop video rental stores I remember very briefly going to as like, a, like I said, a really little kid. But Blockbuster was somewhere that I would go every single Friday after school. Like, and I would always go rent new movies. It was always a big thing for me, you know? And then then there was Hollywood Video. I would go to Hollywood Video as well, but Blockbuster was like the best one, in my opinion, and I found the most stuff there. It was there all the time. It was like, I don't know, I was like obsessed with going there. And this is a documentary though, and that while this was being made, there was still a couple blockbusters left. I think there was like three left. And then as the documentary was going along, this ended up, it ended up becoming about the last blockbuster because all the ones had closed. And right now there's only one left in Bend, Oregon. And this is basically all about this. And it's about the manager who's like working at the place and her family and kind of, you know, keeping it running and kind of like all the behind the scenes stuff there. And, and it has like, it talks to people on here, like Kevin Smith is in here, uh, Doug Benson, uh, Jamie Kennedy, Paul Shear. Jimmy Kennedy's talking about, and it was, I never knew about how he, you know, was actually uh, like kind of like the spokesman for a while of, of, for Blockbuster and like all these commercials and everything. I didn't even remember that. Um, Brian Posehn is in here. Uh, I, it's really great documentary. If you guys are, you know, you know, loved Blockbuster growing up and always were a fan of Blockbuster, this is definitely one to check out. And, you know, great like archival footage in here too of Blockbuster, some early video and that kind of stuff. And I don't know, Lauren Lopkiss, you know, is the narrator on this one, but I thought this one was definitely uh, worth watching. Here's a look though inside and this has the DVD and the Blu-ray. And the next ones I got here are all from Umbrella Entertainment, and these ones are all Australian releases. And these ones are also all region free, so you guys can watch these ones no problem in any U.S. Uh, Blu-ray or DVD player. And the first one here is uh, Stephen King Presents Amazing Stories, and this is the complete series uh, of the show. This is an outstanding anthology series. If you guys have never seen this one, this one is an absolute must-watch. I know they brought back this series, I believe, um, like you know, rebooted it. I think on like Apple Plus or Apple TV. I believe they did a reboot of it. I haven't seen any of the reboot at all though the original series though is i always absolutely loved it and it's you know is you know was um you know pr produced by steven spielberg and has lots of different you know um great directors on here a lot of uh you know actors are on the show like Kiefer sutherland uh, charlie sheen tim robbins john lithgow Dana devito christopher lloyd patrick swayze Haley mills uh, david carradine kevin costner lots and so many different actors are on this series but it was basically like i said an anthology series and they were all different styles they were like uh, some of them that were like heavy drama ones. Uh, some of them were, you know, horror or science fiction related. Uh, some of them were more comedy. One of them was an animated one. It was actually the origin of Family Dog. If you guys remember that series, that was, you know, uh, Tim Burton was behind. I used to love that series as a kid, and that was this was actually the origin of that, um, uh, you know, uh, character was uh, from this uh, series. But this, like I said, is a really great series. It has on here over 20 minutes of deleted scenes. I'll show you guys though a look inside here at the disc. But this is one uh, that I have always loved, so a really great set. And like I said, this one is region free. The next one here from um, um, Umbrella Entertainment as well. And this is one I finally got to see this movie. I never watched this one till now. And this is uh, this is also region free as well. And this is uh, you know stars Viggo Morgensen, uh, Naomi Watts, and Vincent Cassell. And this is uh, Eastern Promises. And this is directed by David uh, Cronenberg. Like I said, I don't know how I never watched this one till now. And this is like such a great movie. And it's basically though about Naomi Watts' character, who's this nurse. 
and something ends up happening about you know she's like well she's actually delivers babies and everything and this baby ends up uh, living but the mother ends up dying and she wants to kind of investigate who the mother was and get to the bottom of it and she ends up going to this one restaurant and meets this guy who's there and you can tell it has like stuff that doing with a like, Russian Russian mob and all this type of stuff and there though she meets Viggo Mortensen's character who's like the one guy's uh, the one son's uh, driver and she starts talking to him and kind of likes sort of kind of likes him a little bit and they start kind of talking and and it's this whole big thing where you know like her asking these questions is not a good thing and everything and it's it's a great movie though it's one you guys have got to watch like I said I, I, I don't not know how it took me this long to finally see this movie it's now like you know 14 years it took me to watch it uh, but it has on here though uh, feature wise it has um, some featurettes on the film but definitely a must watch uh, the next one here is from uh, Umbrella Entertainment as well. And this is a movie that I always really love that's from the Cohen uh, brothers, or actually just Joe Cohen uh, wrote this, uh, directed this one. I don't think they both directed it, but they both wrote the film. And this is a movie that stars John Turturro and John Goodman. And I always love this movie with John Goodman. John Goodman plays like really like crazy in this, and he's like always sweating and dabbing sweat and everything. And it's a movie here called Barton Fink. And this is, you know, John Turturro's character. He's going and staying in this one apartment place, and he's like writing this script, and he's like in there kind of cracking up and he's like envisioning things and John Goodman is like playing like the one guy in the building and he's like, like I said he's always sweating he's like it's like it's crazy he's like real crazy in this movie I, I really like this movie like I said you do not hear about this one as much when it comes to other Coen brother movies this is the one you do not hear about too often and it is a great film uh, and the last one from Umbrella Entertainment is a documentary here called Three Identical Strangers and this is about these three brothers that were basically like you know they were adopted by three different families and it's basically though them like you know getting like a reunion of these brothers you know that like kind of didn't know that they existed that there was like three of them and it, like I said they were adopted by three different families and everything it's a really really great documentary here uh, and like I said this one is also region free uh, as well uh, the next one here is from Groucho's Ventures and it's a movie here called uh, Bad Impulse and this one you know um as in here, Paul Savino is in this movie, and it was kind of reminding me a little bit of Stay Tuned. If you guys remember Stay Tuned, it was like with John Ritter, and like a, a guy comes to him, uh, you know, and tells him about this like TV, uh, you know, which would be like the TV, uh, you know, dish thing of his dreams, where he'd have all these channels and everything. And this kind of plays out like that a little bit, like about, you know, uh, this, you know, guy coming to the house, telling him about this, you know, uh, amazing like security system that is like the best security system ever. You keep your family the safe as possible because something had happened to the family and that's why they wanted to get this security system and basically though it ends up being like this security system is basically there's something really up with it and it's like really like controlling and, and they made movies like this too I remember like in the 90s where it would be like the house where it would like something was really weird about the house or the house had like a mind of its own or something got con like got like controlled in and it was like it kind of like obsessed with the people in the house like the security system there's I can't remember what it was but there's one that was like a might have been a TV movie like that that I remember like seeing as a kid or something like that but this is it's kind of like that a little bit like with a stay tuned uh, kind of vibe like I said this one here is called Bad Impulse uh, the next one here, this is um, for, from 4 Digital Media. It's a movie here called Stranded on Mars. And this is basically, though, about this uh, spaceship that's going on like, this expedition to Mars. And basically, though, you know, they're kind of like talking to the, um, the, you know, the people on Earth and everything at NASA about like the, you know, the, the ship going in and everything. But something goes terribly wrong and the ship ends up like crashing down on Mars and basically there you know the one astronaut ends up surviving there and then they, they don't realize that too at first they think that everyone had passed away and they think that the mission had failed and everything but basically though it's kind of like the um you know the movie um the Martian a little bit, like, you know, with Matt Damon, it's like, instead, it's, but the Martian, though, he didn't really have communication, in this one, though, the Martian is, like, able to talk back to Earth and everything, but it's kind of like, on Earth, they're figuring out, well, how are we going to rescue this guy, what can he do, and he's basically up there on Earth, you know, on Mars by himself, kind of, like, kind of, like, seeing things and hearing things, and all these kind of things are happening, it's a really, really intense movie, I thought this was really well done, like I said, this one here is called Stranded uh, on Mars, uh, the next one here is from uh, Quiver, uh, you know, uh, Distribution, 
And this is a movie which stars um, M Malin Ackerman, uh, Bella Thorne, and Alec Baldwin. And it's a movie called Chick Fight. This is a fun movie. It's basically though about Malin Ackerman's character, and she ends up getting like um, you know introduced to this all female uh, fight club, and she gets kind of brought in there, and uh, she meets like Bella Thorne's character, who's kind of like the one there who's like the top level. Like everyone's like fighting her, and she's always winning, and she's the one too that like everyone's kind of intimidated by and everything, and she kind of gets called out to to fight her and everything and like she ends up getting you know convinces Alec Baldwin you know who's like this trainer to help train her and everything and it's a it's a fun movie it's one of those movies too that has a whole lot of different like cameos and comedians in here and it's basically though like um like kind of like I said, it's like Fight Club, but an all female Fight Club, and it's all these kind of like crazy things going on and about the training process and everything. I thought this, like I said, a really really fun movie here. The next one here, this is from ITN Distribution. And it's a movie here called From the Depths, and this is basically though about this girl who ended up, you know, uh, surviving the shark attack. In the beginning of the movie, you see that she was involved in the shark attack, and it's something that has really haunted her. And from this, she's kind of having visions and like memories of what had happened, and like it kind of is like haunting her life. Life. And it's getting to the point where even out in, in, in public, when she just goes out into the world, she starts seeing the shark. She sees the shark like appear in front of her, almost like it's like a ghost. And it's kind of, you know, um, scaring her. And like, and then, but basically what ends up happening though is then it's kind of like things are kind of like happening that people are like dying around her and stuff like that too. And it's kind of like, well, is it, is there something going on here? Or is it like, there's, is this thing, is this actually like some kind of a, a shark that's a ghost or, or is she involved in what's going on here? What exactly is happening but I thought this was like a really different you know twist on the whole shark attack kind of thing about somebody that involved with it would actually you know survive through it but then was having like haunted visions and everything from it after the math uh, the next one here this is from uh, MPI and this is a um, co the complete series here of Betty White's pet set this is fun this is a, a series that was from uh, I guess it was from ni 19, before 1971. I don't know exactly when this started, but it was basically though uh, with, uh, with Betty White going and interviewing uh, celebrities about their pets, and they would have their pet on the show with them. They would just kind of talk to them, like kind of like the you know interview questions and everything. But it would also be a lot of stuff about the pets. And it had people on here. Uh, some of the people who were on here were like um, Burt Reynolds, James Stewart, uh, Mary Tyler Moore, uh, Carol Burnett, or Shirley Jones, Michael Landon, James. Brolin. So it has all these different people. Eddie Albert, Bob Kane, Crane, Johnny Mathis. So lots and lots of different people on here. Uh, and it has on here feature-wise Betty White's pet set behind the scenes, pet, the pet set promo spots, Betty uh, White game show goodness, Betty White queen of television, a photo gallery on here, public service spots on this one. Here's though, a look though inside at the discs here as well. But a fun, like a fun uh, interview series. Like I said, I never knew about this one. And the last one here, this is from Eureka Entertainment. This is one I want you guys to know was available. This is a movie which stars Anthony Quinn and Robert Forrester, and this is called The Don is Dead. And this one here uh, has on here, though, um, you know, um, the 10 ET presentation on here. It has a brand new feature length audio commentary by author Scott Harrison, uh, theatrical trailers on this one. And here's, though, a look, though, inside at the disc. And it has a, a booklet in here as well with some stuff about, about the production. It has like um, you know, uh, picture, uh, posters from the movie, uh, all that kind of stuff here uh, as well. But like I said, though, just want you guys to know that this one was available from uh, Eureka Entertainment. But anyway, though, guys, that was all for the review portion of this video. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these uh, shopping videos, uh, definitely give us a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching, subscribing, and I'll see.